Defeated against Costa Rica by four goals to two. The Germans are out. Japan win the group. Spain second. Germany out in third. I think it's time to call in Detective Peter Walton to try and sort out what's gone on here. Peter, I think we're fairly clear about the law. If the curvature of the ball is over any part of the line, yep. then it's still in. But That's we've seen no more angles. We've seen no conclusive angle at all since that moment. No, you're quite right there. And I, I'm, I'm seeing the same angles as you are. And you're quite right with the law as well. There's a misconception in law that just because the part of the ball that touches the ground is over the line, the ball's out. Well, it clearly isn't because it's the curvature of the ball, as you quite rightly said. And we see this often at the corner kick taken when the ball's over the line, but not quite over the line. In this instance here, what the, uh, the VAR is looking for is the evidence to suggest to the referee that the ball has clearly left the field of play. And if we're looking at the evidence that we're, we're seeing, in front of us he doesn't have that in front of him what I would suggest is the goal line uh, technology uses those cameras there to see if the ball is in or out of the goal those same cameras are being used for VAR to discover whether or not that ball has left the field of play so there are angles that will show that if, however, a player's boot or a player's shin has just um, uh, gone over the top of the ball so you can't see it clearly then the VAR will say to the referee, I don't have that evidence to give you, Mr. Referee. Stay with your on-field decision. So we'll wait and see what pictures um, FIFA show us. But at the moment, the law is specific. The ball is still in play if the curvature of the ball touches or breaks that line. Do we have that evidence in front of us to show to the contrary? No, we don't. But it's bizarre, Peter, that we haven't been supplied. Anybody in the world, all international broadcasters, no one has been supplied with that conclusive evidence. That's a bit odd, isn't it? Well, that's very peculiar, actually, because if you remember at the start of this tournament, what FIFA said for offside decisions was that those, those decisions would be shown automatically to the, the stadium so people who was watching the game in the stadium could see them. And that, that technology is still available for this goal line uh, decision here. So I'm uh, at a miss as to why they haven't shown it yet, but clearly they've got the reasons behind it and only time will tell. But I do, I do think the evidence will appear sooner or later when that ball hasn't completely crossed that line. Mark, we're getting close to an hour since the incident. There's the, the longer they don't come up with a picture, see that that last bit there, that would tell me that ball's out of play. Yeah. I mean, everybody at home the, looking at that, the, understandably, would interpret that as The longer they don't play. produce a picture which shows conclusively that it's not going out of play, you're thinking there's something untoward going on. And that, that, that has to be, there's 80 million Germans right now going mad, waiting for a, a picture that shows that that ball didn't go out of play. I, I, I think every television studio, every pundit, every person that does your job is waiting for the picture. Why, and nearly an hour later, are they not producing one? I, look, I don't believe in conspiracies. Um, I, I just believe that in this tournament, they've just not demonstrated it. That high, that high cam that's actually on the line does tend to suggest that there might be some of the ball um, over the line. But... My, I'm struggling with it. From that very first offside goal disallowed, Ecuador v Qatar, game one, I've struggled a little bit with it and found it uncomfortable that we're not being given the correct angles and the correct camera because it just doesn't feel right. Well, I mean, we're here live at the game. The first thing I said was, it's gone out. It was I right mean, in front of us. Yeah. Our it's angle. Just right down. We, had, we had a great angle. It's, it's yeah. the first thing I said, so, you know. But why, why would you, if you're FIFA, knowing it's, Germany, it's not a small footballing nation, why would you create what... We're, Confusion and theories coming out on that shouldn't be going on. I don't, I don't think that's happening. I think we I'm just choose words very carefully. The, yes. But why would you not? <laughs> why would you not want to clear that up immediately? No, no, I agree. The, the reason I'm a little bit relaxed is because Germany are the ones that are suffering, and yeah. we've suffered quite a lot at the hands of Germany over the years. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, not... I'm thinking it's giving them another goal to complain about, apart from Jeff Hurst. That's yeah. what I'm thinking at times. But you would. I mean, in all seriousness, you would. It, it if you're Germany, you'd want to see the evidence. If the evidence is is provided. And, and, and the evidence shows it was in, then you could go OK. But until, you know, you would understandably you'd want to see the evidence. Yeah, but, but the rea reality is you've got three games in a group game to, yeah. to, be, to, to be through. Yeah. Germany lost their first game against Japan. They had chances against Spain to win. You never want to put yourself in a position where something like that, even though you do the job on the day, keeps you out. So Germany should have done more in the group yeah. games they've had. They've made a right mess of the group, haven't they, yeah, by obviously starting off with where they were at. I'm stunned at Spain. I mean, I can't believe that in that second half there, but well done to Japan. 
And you stunned at Spain, who were excellent in the first half. Then Japan went forward to the back and really changed it. But the equaliser, actually, for all for well, all the controversy about the winner, the goalkeeper's the, had a nightmare. The big decision for Spain in the next game is whether they stick with their goalkeeper, because Simon, to oh. be honest with you, he's not filled me with confidence. He's the one part of the team that looks like a real weak point. And I have to say that it starts off badly. I think they're sort of you know, we know they play out from the back, we know they take chances, we want them to continue to do this, it's how Spain have operated for years, so we're not trying to change that. But once this shot comes in, I but mean... It's the, it's the guy on the left-hand side, this guy was... This, who was that? I don't he makes think, a mess of it. Yeah, but we don't, we, mean, they do that, Graham, don't they? They do Valde. that, they do yeah. that, but he's got to save that. I mean, Straight through him, Gary, hasn't he? Yeah, it? it's no good, that. I mean, you've got, Raya on, you've got Raya on the bench, you've got Sanchez, De Gea's still at home, and I know that he's not been brilliant these last few years, but... I can't think that he would have let that in. I mean, that's a real bad one, that. That, that in a knockout game... Solid is, hands to it. Yeah, in, in a knockout game, that's fatal for you. Morocco against Spain, Japan against Croatia. That's how it looks in the last 16. What an evening. Jeremy Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's enough gloating. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's called schadenfreude, yes. Yeah. No, I, listen, it's shaping up to be a great World Cup. I think it's been fantastic so far. And it's like any other World Cup. The further you go into it, the games get better, the players become more relaxed. They, you know, you know, generally, generally the big teams turn up when it really matters. But I was thinking of Germany when I started that yeah. sentence. I mean, is there any such thing anymore no. in, in this tournament well, it's a big, big, big nation? Mm. We've just seen two go out today, you know, Belgium and, and Germany. So, you know, if you're a sort of so-called smaller team in this tournament, you've got everything to play for. Yeah. Um, go for it. There's well, been so you're many Jap examples. Japan. Yeah, absolutely. Just say Japan, Croatia have been fantastic in the last six years, but, you know, they're, they're an ageing team, let's be honest, aren't they? And with the energy and the belief that Japan have shown, that, that's one game you look at and think... Yeah, There's they'll absolutely no certainty no, Croatia go through. They'll there. fancy the chances, and when Spain get back into that dressing room, they'll probably work out that they've gone down a little bit of an easier side of the yeah, draw. Yeah, that's the only thing we haven't mentioned. Yes. And that they'll be not thinking, deliberately. Not deliberately. No, I mean, they were trying to go for yeah. a goal at the end, and there's no way that they were sort of in control of that decision, and obviously the, the goalkeeper throwing them on in. But Spain will get back in there and think they've got a better chance of progressing to the semi-finals now than they actually did do before. And look, at this moment in time, I think you look at some of the African teams, the, the Asian teams, they fancy the chances in this World Cup. Is this a Winter World Cup where mid-season, does this start to explain the, the strangeness, if we can put it that way, of some of the results? Or just the narrowing of the gap in international I, exactly, football? I think it's more about the qualities of emerging nations. I think you've seen Japan tonight. I mean, they, they looked like a, an experienced footballing nation with a great pedigree. They were at it. They stuck together when the going got tough. I think you have to put the USA in the same category. You know, they've been really good, and you look at them, and I watch them playing against England, I'm thinking that's a team with pedigree, not a team that's that's just sort of getting going in, in, in world football. And, and I think it's a closing of the gap. I really do. And it's the exposure, isn't it, in the big leagues to all these players. You'll even look at Australia as well, the fact that they're playing in major leagues now. Well, you made the point earlier, you know, you look at USA, all those lads are playing in Europe. So the fear factor, the inferior the inferiority is gone. You know, the Japanese, a lot of them are playing in Germany, you know, in Spain. You know, so, so there's a, I think there's a psychology shift that's happening. We don't tend to trust FIFA at all, do we? Obviously, in our country, and for a good reason. But the reason they've moved the actual World Cup to 48 teams in a few years' time is to widen in participation to give more African-Asian teams to be able to do it. And in the Premier League, we see Omras, we see all the big camps. Here, we don't. 